Hey friends, welcome to this video and today we are making glue stick double tissue. Now, why do we need to use glue sticks and what kind of double tissue are we making? Well, you can see we have some white tissue and some black tissue. And if you ever made your own double tissue, you know that the black will bleed through the white paper and it's gonna cause like a muted gray. And sometimes that's nice, but really the stark colors make it really nice. And this would be the same for, say, like a yellow on black or any kind of combination um, like that. The glue stick will hopefully allow us to do this um, and we'll see if it works. It's basically an experiment that a few friends have kind of uh, given me the idea for. And so we're going to find out how this works out. Is this a good option? And I'll kind of talk about some other options as well as just a couple different kinds of double tissue and more. But yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to show you what I do and we'll see if it works out. All right, so the materials we're going to be using today is a spray bottle, some methyl cellulose, a paintbrush, and our double tissue. Um, we're also going to use two metal rulers, and we also need uh, some just some exacto blades to cut out our double tissue when we're done. Uh, besides that, we're also going to use our trusty gridded cutting mat, and this is what we're treating the double tissue on. Um, now, this is one of the best investments I've ever made in origami, so I highly recommend, recommend you guys to get one uh, if you can. I'll try to link this one below, and it wasn't that expensive. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to treat our paper, and I'm just going to give a little bit of tips as you guys watch me. So first, you see me cleaning the surface. Very important, you don't want dirt underneath your paper. Uh, besides that, when you put your paper down, if it's folded like my tissue came with, it's nice to spray it with our spray bottle um, and then just a little bit. That helps undo some of the wrinkles before you apply methyl cellulose. Um, this can definitely help later on when you push out air bubbles. Um, but yeah, so give that a shot if your double tissue has been pretty wrinkly. Um, and one tip I like to do before I treat paper in general is to wear a hat and that is because your hair falls out randomly and oftentimes you'll lose some hair while um, prepping the sheet and if it gets stuck in the paper once it's dry it's pretty hard to get it out uh, but yeah so wear a hat you can get one from my merch shop here's the origami by boys hat definitely a good pickup so now on to applying the methyl cellulose. I like to apply it lengthwise. Um, so as you can see, it's the long direction. And this just helps me get less air bubbles. Um, I don't know if this helps anyone else or maybe it depends on the tissue, but I prefer doing it this way. Uh, starting from the middle and pushing outwards generally does a pretty decent job. Now, when I'm applying, um, some people like to push out all the air bubbles. Now, I am actually just really lazy with doing this, so I don't push out all the air bubbles. Also, if my methyl cellulose is a little bit too watery, the tissue paper generally isn't strong enough to handle pushing the air bubbles out. Uh, one thing I might do is I wait for it to dry a little bit. So after I apply, I'll wait maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes before uh, pushing out the air bubbles with maybe like an old gift card or something. But yeah, um, pretty simple. Just let it dry. And uh, once it is drying, if you're using a surface that's not like my cutting pad where the paper will lift, uh, one thing I like to do is use our two metal uh, rulers, or in this case, meter sticks, to just uh, weigh down the edges where it's likely to lift. And often doing this, um, one, it won't stick to the ruler because it's partly dry, and two, your paper won't lift off the, uh, the sheet. But yeah. All right, so now the paper's fully dry, and since this is our first sheet, we're actually going to peel it off the mat. I'm not going to cut it, but you see I'm using my knife to gently lift the corner. Now, my methyl cellulose was a little bit stickier this time, so... I didn't want the paper to tear from pulling off the sheet. Um, I can't exactly just rip the paper off um, in one 
smooth motion because it was pretty delicate. Um, so I was just being careful. So if you guys are doing this, if you got an X-Acto blade, then maybe it helps for starting the paper and helping it to be nice. Um, but yeah, we are using the dark paper first. Um, and I don't know which one's better, but my thought process was um, this paper is the one solid sheet and you'll see when we get to the second sheet I needed to combine two pieces um, and this would just make it easier uh, as you'll see in a little bit All right, so now we are on to the white sheet and I actually didn't have the big uh, tissue paper like the black one in white and I just had this janky tissue paper I had found from buying clothes off the internet and I just saved the packaging um, this was about half the size, so I combined two together, meaning that I had a little bit of a seam. This definitely wasn't ideal, but if it works, then it would show me that I can make even larger sheets of tissue with just a little bits of seam using this method. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was kind of worth exploring. Um, but yeah, if you guys have uh, the proper size sheet, you definitely don't need to do this. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing the exact same process as I did with the last sheet, uh, prepping and treating it, and this tissue was just way too thin and not the greatest of qualities, so when I was pushing air bubbles out, it actually left, um, it damaged the paper a bit, not really leaving holes, but like small portions that were definitely um, thinner than the initial white tissue. Uh, you'll see how this affects the paper later, but yeah. Uh, but we're just going to let this dry and see what happens. So here is the dry tissue paper. And as you can see, there's a little bit of gaps in areas where I couldn't push out the air bubbles because of uh, the low quality of tissue paper. You can also see the little bit of a seam I was talking about. I think I did a pretty good job at minimizing that. Um, and the last thing you'll notice here is the difference in tones between the two papers. I think I forgot to take into account one that was shiny side up and one that was shiny side down and it mattered just a little bit um, but yeah let's get into applying the second tissue on top of this one so now is the exciting part combining the two sheets and before i apply the glue i'm actually lining up the black sheet and i'm using the pvc pipe to roll up uh, the paper and you'll actually note, and this is something I recommend if you have this cutting board, is to treat your paper underneath along the lines. That way you can already cut a perfect square while it's still stuck onto the board. Um, so you'll see the lines are just a little bit off so I can trim a perfect rectangle and then a perfect square once everything's bound. Um, but once we get to the glue stick, I'm trying to glue stick as much of the paper as I can. Now I felt rushed because I thought the glue was going to dry too quickly and that actually caused me to miss way too many spots on the paper. Um, however, you can just apply more glue or uh, afterwards um, and you'll see how that kind of turned out for me. Uh, but if I were to do this again, I would be a lot more thorough with my glue stick. And now I'm actually rolling the paper onto the glued white sheet. And the PVC pipe helps me so, so much to line everything perfectly up. And it also helps me to reduce the amount of air bubbles that I initially have because we're not exactly going to be able to push it out like we normally would for double tissue. Um, but with this said, you'll see me trying to flatten this square as much as I can um, using both our rulers, the PVC pipe, and just my hands. And I'm just going to let that sit uh, for about 20 minutes. It doesn't really need that long to dry, um, but with some weight on top of it. Now that the sheets are dry, it's time to cut everything out. So you'll see it's pretty easy for me to find the references on what to cut out because the lines are already along the grid lines of the cutting board. Uh, once again, this is such a great tool to use. It makes it way easier to make perfect squares. Um, Speaking from experience of folding a lot of non-perfect squares, this is definitely a game changer. Um, but yeah, we're trimming out the edges, peeling away, and finally getting to the square. 
And of course, I'm measuring twice so I can cut once and not make a mistake. And we're on to peeling the square. I also have a pretty good size remaining piece of the paper that I can actually chop into more squares. Uh, so this is just the benefit of using the cutting board. Um, but yeah, and taking off the square, it's was very careful, very, very careful. And you'll see me actually apply a little bit of glue from the glue stick along this process. Um, the edge was pretty strong, but there were some areas that had some air pockets. Um, but what I was most happy about is that the seam between the two white tissue papers maintained intact as I peeled the paper off the cutting board. And here it is, the finished glue stick double tissue. And I have it right next to a sheet of my personal favorite double tissue, Paper Fox double tissue, to show the difference between the grayness um, that's normal versus the glue stick, which has a lot more of a white color to it. Now, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love Paper Fox double tissue. You can already see how high quality it is with no air pockets, unlike mine with a lot of air pockets. Um, I'm actually going to plug Ryan a little bit because I think he, the quality, the service, and the speed at which he delivers double tissue is phenomenal. A lot of people say they're concerned about the steep-ish price, but it totally makes sense for what Ryan is able to provide. And there's very few options like that out on the internet that people will actually do. Um, so mega props to Ryan. It's great double tissue. And if you have a job and you have money and no time to make your own double tissue, that is what Paper Fox double tissue is for. And of course, we need to test this paper out on a worthy model. So here's a time lapse of me folding a, what I'll call complex origami model. I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is yet, so maybe you can guess by enjoying the small time lapse and as I fold, it's gonna look more and more like the finished product. Um, I'll kind of talk about what it was like to fold with um, this paper when you see the reveal model right after this time lapse. Um, other than that, just enjoy a little bit of folding and my hands just rapid firing uh, to get this model done. All right, so here is the finished house made designed by Obelisk. And what a great model to test out this double tissue paper. Now, I think the <laughs> air bubbles worried me a little bit at the beginning, and I was wondering how the paper would be to fold. But to my surprise, it was actually really enjoyable. There were some moments where the paper would lift, but I can just glue it back together, and it really wasn't an issue. Um, and same with the air bubbles. Uh, the fact that it was pretty perfect square because of the way I prepped it on the cutting board made it really nice to fold and I could do a lot of precise folding and shaping. Um, so I would give this overall experiment a success. Now there's obviously better methods to do duo backed paper. Um, a bunch of my friends have told me some different methods that I'd like to try. Uh, but I'd like to give a shout out to Fine Simon Art for giving me the idea to do this glue stick double tissue. And I even have a couple more pieces of smaller sheets to fold some more fun stuff with and really, uh, <laughs> you know, see what I can use it for. But overall, I can recommend this. Um, there's definitely better ways to apply the glue stick. I very much rushed it. So if you guys want to try it, definitely go for it. But that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed kind of the format. Um, this video is also for Bodo's origami video challenge um, where he's looking for creative videos. So 
I'm not too sure how many paper experiment videos there are on the internet right now, so hopefully you guys thought this was creative, and Bodo, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but other than that, that wraps up this video. Let me know what you think, and let me know if you're going to try out this method for double tissue. And yeah, other than that, the last thing I have to tell you guys is I am releasing my Etsy store. So my Etsy store has a couple models on there that I think are my best kind of designs for people to own. So if you guys are interested in purchasing one, or if you think you know someone who's interested in figurine collection or some sculpture collections, definitely send them my way. I think the wet folded anglerfish, as well as the new samurai, are really awesome uh, if people would like to own them. Other than that, thanks guys for watching. Leave me a comment, drop a like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze now. I'm